Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So, here it is a week later. I let you guys think about this. I had a lot of interesting reactions and thoughts, concerns, questions. So don't forget, this was a thought experiment. I wanted you to take what I was giving you, think about why this would or wouldn't work, how to apply it, and just think about it and let me know your thoughts. So over at the forums is the best best place. Blah, blah, blah. Over at the forums is the best. I cannot speak. Over at the forums is the best place to post your responses because uh, that way I can interact with you a little better there. So link in the description. So now I have some more questions and thoughts for you. I'm going to leave this alone and let you think about it. But now I'm going to bring up some other points. Um, a lot of you understood what I was trying to do here, and you know, I'm not dealing with a lot of variables. I'm not dealing with flow. So what happens whenever you connect two tanks together at this flow? But the point is, is that the thought experiment said that one PSI per minute, you could get full torque out of the motor that you were running. So if I have a 100 PSI tank and it'll run for 100 PSI, or I'm sorry, if it'll run, start over. If I have a 100 PSI in a tank and I have one PSI per minute usage, it tells you the volume of the tank. Because once I get below a certain point, I have no more flow, I have no more pressure, and it specifies. So I, I was giving you the value of the tank, okay? So in this other scenario, th this whole entire thing will work if you're just talking about pressure. But we have to talk about flow rate and we have to talk about the volume a little better, and we have to talk about other things. But I'm not going to bring those up, because I want to, I want to ask another question. So I'm going to erase this. Um, it's probably best to use a little water. I'm going to erase this and ask another simple question. And maybe this one will be a little bit more value for you. I don't know. But what's important is the thing I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to see if you agree or disagree with these. And uh, hopefully this stuff is uh, helping you think about other things. So I'm going to ask a simple question. Oh, and before I do that, I want you guys to realize, I'll let this dry anyway. I want you real to realize one simple thing. I asked a very simple question, and I wanted people to think about the scenario that I was giving you on this board. And I wanted you to see if you could just follow instructions. So I was giving you an imaginary air motor, and I was giving you an imaginary situation, and I was asking you what happens in the situation. So first of all, if you can't understand the imaginary air motor, then you won't be able to do the thought experiment. And I did bring up a few other things in that other video, but the point is, is that most of you just jumped the gun and went into a whole new direction and never even talked about this. You talked about something completely different. Some of, for some of you, that's, a, that's an okay thing. But the point is, is that if you can't follow a simple instructional thought experiment, then you're not going to be able to follow instructions when someone gives them to you. And that bothered me a little bit. So I wanted to bring that up. So here we go. Easy peasy does it. Very simple situation. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. If I have 100 PSI, if you want to put a volume to the tank, let's just make it 10,000 liters. It's a pretty big air tank. That's a, I'm not even going to say it. It's a pretty big air tank. All right, if I connect that to a pipe, oh boy, man, my spelling is fantastic. My t my. Oh man, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to rewrite that. That is just amazingly terrible. A pipe. Okay. And here is the atmosphere. So I have pressure in a tank. Stored energy. All right, I have stored energy in a tank. I have a pipe leading to atmosphere. The pipe could be of any length of your choice. It doesn't really matter. It can be this long if you want. Uh, it could be any volume that you want. 
uh, the smaller the pipe, the longer it's going to take to dissipate this amount of pressure in this tank. Uh, and here you go, I gave you a volume. So you can calculate the flow rate if I gave you a pipe diameter. But I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it open to you to decide whatever you wish. So now I have a question. If I had a valve right here, that's probably the wrong symbol for a valve. Just ignore the symbol. But if I had a valve right there, all right, and I turned it, and I let the air flow out, what happens? Simple answer. You lose all your stored potential out to atmosphere. And that's it. Nothing else happens. So now I have a, another scenario for you. Same thing. All right. That's a really big tank. I have 100 PSI. I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to put 1,000 PSI, and I'm going to do it up here, too. It's more fun to think about higher pressure with a big volume like this. So now I have one tank. Now I'm going to connect an air motor. You can make up any value you wish here. This is part of the experiment. out to atmosphere. So now what's going to happen? Okay, I'll go ahead and mark these. Scenario one and scenario two so we can discuss them down in the comments or in the uh, forums which I prefer. What happens here versus here with the stored potential? Still goes out to atmosphere, right? There's no difference here. The only difference, oh boy, excuse me. The only difference is that now you ran a motor. So my question to you, did the motor consume the energy or not? That's the question I have. Stored potential, stored potential. Out to atmosphere, out to atmosphere. Here, you're probably generating some heat, some other things. Here, you're actually running an air motor. The question is, did the air motor consume the energy? Okay, now I have one last thing to talk about. And this one's the most important. I have a scenario three. It is identical. I have a thousand, I would, yeah, okay, a thousand PSI. 10,000 liters. Big old tank, man. All right, so now I have a motor. I am this situation out to atmosphere. What happens? Okay, here it just have an air motor. It just runs like a little Dremel bit and it doesn't really have any mass. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't have it doesn't carry any inertia. So now if I were to tie A, is that actually right, inertia? Oh well, my spelling is wonderful as you guys know. This is a flywheel. A flywheel, it's attached to the motor. It is of whatever size you want it to be. You can have a little one or a big one, but I can tell you it needs to be tuned, okay? It needs to be impedance matched to this tank. And if it is, when this tank reaches zero PSI or one atmosphere, this flywheel is spinning. So you took this potential stored energy and you turned it into this potential kinetic energy and you still send all the air out to atmosphere. But what did you do? You now have the energy saved in this flywheel. And the only losses again are you know, some mechanical things here or the heat dissipation of the air changing, all these things that you still have to account for. But the, the point is, 
is that you can store this energy in a flywheel as inertia. And this is very important. And these are concepts that really you should already know if you're into this type of research. There's really nothing new here. It's just thinking about it with air, which is a lot more fun. I'm going to draw one more thing, but I'm not going to give you the answer. Okay, I have another tank. It is also very big. It is connected to a motor, connected to a flywheel. So it has inertia. And I tie it to another air tank. Again, don't forget, zero PSI is one atmosphere, and this is actually a thousand plus atmosphere. Okay? My question to you is very simple. In scenario number four, if you have an impedance matched situation, I don't know where to stand. If you have an impedance match situation where when this pressure reaches the equal pressure in this tank, which would be, not 10, 500 PSI. If at that point you reach the maximum velocity of this flywheel, what happens? You went from potential stored to potential kinetic, and now your tanks are equalized but you have all this potential built up. This motor now becomes a pump. And if it's tuned, how much pressure is here and here when this flywheel stops spinning in that direction? And if you want to get more accurate, you would actually put a check valve in this line so pressure can't go backwards. Anyway, so answer the question. What happens in scenario number four? I'll leave you guys at that. These are thought experiments, but you could imply them into other situations and actually use them in your real world scenarios. Um, this is basic, basic stuff, but I have, an, I, have an, I have one more question. A motor attached to a flywheel, pressure stored in a tank, I'm going to give these components names. Okay, this is number one component. Actually, let's do A. And I don't have a number. Component A. Ignore my spelling. Component A. And this as a whole is component B. All right, so component A is this tank, component B is this motor flywheel attachment. What are these in electrical terms? That's my question. So two questions. What happens in scenario four with the pressure? Okay, when you have inertia in the flywheel at equal pressure on each side, 500 PSI. And then the second question is, what is component A and what is component B in electrical terms? And I use the word impedance match to kind of help you understand what impedance matching is. I hope that I explained that well enough for you to get. If not, go back and watch the video where I talk about number four. All right, peace and love. Like I said, read the Bible more. Maybe you'll understand more of these thoughts and you'll get some intuition. That's the way to be. I love you guys. Talk to you later. God bless. See ya.